ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते In the 19th and 20th incarnations, the Lord advented himself as Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna in the family of Rishni, the Yadu dynasty, and by so doing, he removed the burden of the world. Text 24. Tatakalo sampravate samhoya sura dvisam udho namanya sutta kikate subavishyati. Then, in the beginning of Galiyug, the Lord will appear as Lord Buddha, the son of Anjana, in the province of Gaya, just for the purpose of deluding those who are envious of the faithful theist. Text 25. Atasso Yuga Samdhyayam Dasyu Prayesu Rajasu Janita Vishnu Yashasho Nana Kalke Jagat Patihi. Thereafter, at the conjunction of two yugas, the Lord of the creation will take his birth as the Kalki incarnation and become the son of Vishnu Yasa. At this time, the rulers of the earth will have degenerated into plunderers. Text 26. Avatara hiya sankheya hare sattva nidhel dvija yatha vidasina kulya sarasa syusa hasra shasa. O Brahmanas, the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable, like rivulets flowing from inexhaustible sources of water. Text 27. Rasayo manavo deva manu putra mahojasa. Kala serve hareva sapraja patea smataha. All the rishis, manus, demigods, and descendants of Manu, who are especially powerful, are plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Lord. This also includes the Prajapatis. Text 28. Ete jamsha kala pumsha Krishna stu Bhagavan swayam. Indrai Vyakulam Lokam Madayanti Yuge Yuge. All of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Lord. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. All of them appear on planets whenever there is a disturbance created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the theists. Text 29. Janmaguyam Bhagavato Yaitet Prayato Naraha Sayam Prata Gran Bhaktiya Dukha Grama Dvimuchyate Whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all miseries of life. Text 30 Etadrupam Bhagavato Yapur Arupasya Chidatmanaha Maya gune virajitam mahadad viratmani. The conception of the virat universal form of the Lord as appearing in the material world is imaginary. It is to enable the less intelligent and neophytes to adjust to the idea of the Lord's having form. But factually, the Lord has no material form. Text 31. Yathanabasi megahogo renurva partivonile evam drastari drishyatvam aropitam abuddhi bihi. Clouds and dust are carried by the air, but less intelligent persons say that the sky is cloudy and the air is dirty. Similarly, they also implant material bodily conceptions on the spirit self. Text 32. 
ಅಥಪರಂಯದ್ಯಕ್ತಂ ಅವ್ಯುದಗುಣ ಭ್ರಮಿತ ಅದ್ರತಶ್ರುತ ವಸ್ತುವತ್ ಸ ಜೀವೋ ಯತ್ ಪುನರ್ಭವ Beyond this gross conception of form is another subtle conception of form which is without formal shape and is unseen unheard and unmanifest the living being has his form beyond the subtlety otherwise he could not have repeated births text 33 yatre me sada sadrupe pratisiddhe svasamvida avidya yatmani kritte iti tad brahma darshanam Whenever a person experiences by self-realization that both the gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with the pure self at that time he sees himself as well as the lord text 34 yadi yes purata devi maya veshrashi matte hai sampana evati vedur mahimni sve mahiyate If the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord then he becomes at once enlightened with, with self realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory Text 35 Evam janmani karmani hi akartu ajanya sacha varnayanti smakavayo vedaguyani hritpate thus learned men describe the births and activities of the unborn and inactive which is undiscoverable even in the vedic literatures he is the lord of the heart text 36 savaidam vishvam mamo galila sajati avati atina sajate smin bhute suchantarita atma tantra sadvargikam jegrati sadgunesha the lord whose activities are always spotless is the master of the six senses and is fully omnipotent with six opulences he creates the manifested universes maintains them and annihilates them without being in the least affected he is within every living being and is always independent text 37 The foolish with a poor fund of knowledge cannot know the transcendental nature of the forms, names and activities of the Lord who is playing like an actor in a drama. nor can they express such things neither in their speculations nor in their words text 38 sa veda datu pada vimparasya duranta virya syaratthanga pane yo maya santayanta nuvratya bhaje tatat pada saroja gandam any those who render unreserved uninterrupted favorable service unto, unto the lotus feet of lord krishna who carries the wheel of the chariot in his hand can know the creator of the universe in his full glory power and transcendence text 39 ateha danya bhagavanta etam yadva sudeve kila lokanate kurvanti sarvatma kamatma bhavam only by making such inquiries in this world can one be successful and perfectly cognizant for such inquiries invoke transcendental ecstatic love unto the personality of godhead who is the proprietor of all the universes and guarantee cent per cent immunity from the dreadful repetition of birth and death text 40 idam bhagavatam nama puru nam brahma sammitam uthama shloka charitam chakara bhagavan rishi nishrishaya shlokasya dhanyam swasti ahyan namahat this shrimad bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of god and it is compiled by shri vyasadev the incarnation of god it is meant for the ultimate good of all people and it is all successful all blissful and all perfect text 41 tadidam 
Tadidam grahayam masa sutam atmavatam yavaram sarva vedita sa tasanam saram saram samudratam. Sri Vyasadev delivered it to his son, who is the most respected among the self realized, after extracting the cream of all Vedic literatures and histories of the universe. Text 42 Satu sam sravayam masa maharajam parikshitam prayopa visitam gangayam paritam paramarishibi. Sukadev Goswami, the son of Vyasadev, in his, in his turn delivered the Bhagavatam to the great Emperor Parikshit, who sat surrounded by sages on the bank of the Ganges, awaiting death without taking food or drink. Text 43. Krishna Svedamopagate Dharma Jnana Dibisaha Kalo Nasta Drisham Mesa Purunarko Duno Dittaha this Bhagavata Purana is as brilliant as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. Text 44. Tatra vipra vipra se buru tejasaha. Aham Chadya Gamam Tatra Nivistasta Danu Grahat Soham Vashrava Yishyami Yatha Dittam Yatha Mati O learned Brahmanas, when Sukadev Goswami recited Bhagavatam there in the presence of Emperor Parikshit, I heard him with rapt attention and thus, by his mercy, I learned the Bhagavatam from the great and powerful sage, now I shall try to make you hear the very same thing as I learned it from him and as I have realized it. Hare Krishna. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for that wonderful recitation. Um, and thank you for joining. It's nice to see some more familiar names uh, on the group. Um, okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, we'll be continuing... Uh, with chapter three today we'll be looking at verse 34 uh, until around 8 40 and then after that we will have a nice budget um, to hear as well but yeah just before we start we'll just do the mangala churn om jnana timirandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasme shri guruve namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namuskite Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patita Nampa Vanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare I'll just share my presentation. Okay. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 34 Yadye Sho Parata Devi Maya Vaisharadi Matihi Sampanna eviti vidur mahimni sve mahiyate. Translation and purple by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Gita. The translation If the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then he becomes at once enlightened with self-realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. So go for the purport now. Um, I'll split the purport into three sections, which we'll uh, discuss one at a time. So I'd like to request, maybe you can have one devotee to read this first paragraph, please. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I read? Yes, please. Thank you. Purport, um, one of the uh, three. Because the Lord is absolute transcendence, all his forms, names, pastimes, attributes, associates, and energies are identical with him. His transcendental energy acts according to his omnipotence. The same energy acts as his external, internal, and marginal energies. And by his omnipotence, he can perform anything and everything through the agency of any of the above energies. Hare Krishna. Can I read it, Prabhu, this next one? Um, we'll just discuss the first one, and then okay. afterwards, Thank you. yeah. Sure, you can read the second one. Thank you. Okay, so... <clears throat> So just highlight on this one a couple of things um, to focus on. Um, that's just what I've chosen to focus on. Obviously, there's everything in there is important, um, but obviously we'll be here for a very long time. Um, so I just thought for this part, first I want to focus on this point that all these aspects of the Lord, his form, his name, pastimes, his qualities, energies, associates, all of the, these things are identical uh, with the Lord, identical with Krishna. So just like the, I'm sure we've all heard uh, the example that um, Sura Prabhupada likes to give, that, you know, to, to give this example that the, there's no difference between the name and form of the Lord. So he says, you know, like, if someone is thirsty and they're chanting water, 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 then they're not gonna, their thirst is not going to be quenched because there's a difference between the name of water and the object itself. But then Prabhupada contrasts this with Krishna. When you say Krishna's name, then immediately he is there. But Krishna himself is actually there. So in that sense, there's no difference between uh, his name and he himself and also you know his pastimes if we're hearing about his pastimes if we're being absorbed in his pastimes or hearing about his qualities and being absorbed in that um, then obviously we are absorbed in Krishna we're thinking of Krishna um, and he says here even his associates are identical with him so we could probably Clarify that as you know, simultaneously one and different, because obviously they're his associates, so they are, you know, different uh, entities, different personalities, but at the same time, um, they are one. In one sense, they're one because, you know, obviously his associates are all pure devotees, and the pure devotee is. Um, identical to the Lord in the sense that they have the same desires. There's, there's no difference whatsoever in their desires. Whatever the Lord desires, whatever the Lord wants, 
that is what the pure devotee wants as well. They have no other separate desires. Um, yeah, no, no desires separate from Krishna. Um, they simply want to serve him and please him, whatever he wants. That is what they want. Um, so in that sense as well, then obviously we know some of his, you could also say some of his associates are, you know, expansions or empowered um, representatives or incarnations or partial incarnations or, you know, something like that. So in that sense, also, we could say that uh, they're, they're identical. Um, and then it mentions here his energies are also identical with him. So we discussed this um, previously as well, I think, in this chapter, um, yeah, where yeah, Krishna and his energy are simultaneously one and different, just as, again, famous example from Prabhupada, um, when he says there's no difference between the energy and the energetic, or the energy and the person who possesses the energy. So he gives example. Um, or the sun and the sun's energies of heat and light are simultaneously one and different. So then it says his transcendental energy um, acts according to his omnipotency. So he is omnipotent, as we know. Um, he is fully powerful and he can do absolutely anything, whatever he likes. Uh, he is fully capable of doing so by his energy. And then here it says, the same energy acts as his external, internal, and marginal energies. So, again, you may have heard of these before. Um, we'll just mention them again. Um, and we did mention, we have mentioned previously, I think, as well, that it's the same energy, but it, we call it these different things based on what, is being, what it is being used for, whatever its purpose is in that situation, um, we would describe it as either external, internal, or marginal, depending on, on the situation. But ultimately, it's the same energy, but just used for different purposes, like it says here. So we know when we're talking about external, we're referring to um, generally the material world um, and the material creation all around us and obviously our material bodies as well. These are all from the external energy. Then internal energy is um, the spiritual world. So the material world is under the, the control of the external energy and the spiritual world is under the control of the internal energy. And also the conditioned souls in the material world, they are under the influence of the external energy and the pure devotees in the spiritual world are um, completely untouched by the external energy because the external energy is not present there, but they are under the influence or under the control of the internal energy. And then we have the marginal energy. So it's described that us, the living entities, we are considered marginal energy. Why is that? Because obviously ultimately, um, in our constitutional position, like I said, we are under the internal energy. And it's only because we are so minute that the Lord is the Lord is supreme, the Lord is infinite, the Lord is omnipotent. Um, and he can never be, he can never fall under the influence of the external energy, he can never fall under the influence of Maya because he is the controller, master of Maya. But because we are very minute living entities, we can be susceptible to coming under the influence of the external energy. So we can either um, fall under the internal or external, and because of this, because of this uh, quality or this this thing, if you like, um, this point of we can either be under either one. Because of that, we are considered on the margin, so marginal. Um, but ultimately. You know, we come from the internal energy in our constitutional position. But we'll discuss that more uh, after. So then he says, by his omnipotency, he can perform anything and everything through the agency of any of the above energies. 
So we mentioned this already, whatever he would like to do, whatever he desires, through his energy, it is performed. Absolutely anything. So yes, it's fairly, fairly simple uh, point there so far. Okay, so we have the uh, second paragraph. Yes, I think we had a volunteer already. So, uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is the different one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, therefore, no, it's different from my book. Oh, is it? Um, anyway, can you see on, on the screen? Yes, okay. okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. He can turn the external energy into internal by his will. Therefore, by his grace, the external energy, which is employed in illusionary illusion, those living beings who want to have it subside by the will of the Lord in terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned soul and the very same energy then acts to help the purified living beings make progress on the path of self-realization. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Um, sorry for the confusion. I, I got it from Vedabase, base, so maybe it's slightly different. Um, yeah. Okay, so this point um, at the beginning is very important. You can turn the external energy into internal just by his will. So this kind of makes it more clearer that ultimately they are one energy. Um, because you know, if they're two completely different things, it'd be hard to turn one into the other, but this is ultimately the same energy. So Krishna by his will can easily turn one into the other, which basically just means um, instead of using it for a material purpose, it's used for spiritual purpose. So, um, then it says, therefore, by his grace, the external energy, which is employed in illusioning those living beings who want to have it. So I highlighted this because an important point that it says, those who want to have it. It's not that everyone is just under an illusion for, for no good reason. You know, those who are under illusion, they actually want to have it. So um, those of us here in the material world, um, we wanted at some point to be illusioned. Um, what kind of illusion? We wanted to, we wanted to believe that we are able to enjoy separately from Krishna. But ultimately that's impossible because we are part and parcel of Krishna and we can only have real happiness, real enjoyment when we are with Krishna because that is our constitutional position to be with Krishna, to serve Krishna. That is the only way we can actually be um, happy, we can actually enjoy. So in order for us to think we are enjoying separate from Krishna, then Krishna had to put us under illusion to think that, oh, I'm this material body and I'm enjoying through my material senses, all these material objects around me. You know, everything around me is, is there for my enjoyment, not for Krishna's enjoyment. So, um, so ultimately we cannot do anything without Krishna, even to, to enjoy separately from Krishna, we need Krishna. So in, in that sense, it's quite interesting there, um, quite ironic that we try, we came here thinking, okay, I'm just rejecting Krishna, I'm just enjoying on my own. But the only way we can enjoy here is when Krishna helps us to enjoy by putting us under illusion. So yeah, so it's for those who want to have it. And then um, it subsides by the will of the Lord in terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned soul. So here there's kind of two points, if you like, is the Lord on one hand and the conditioned soul. So this point about mercy and endeavor, which we've heard you know, countless times that we need these two things. So here, first of all, it mentions um, we can be, it subsides, so we can be brought out of this illusion 
by Krishna's will. So in other words, by his mercy, by his grace, um, he can pull us out of this illusion. But on the other side, us as the conditioned soul, um, we also need to repent and do penance um, because this, you know, this material world, um, you know, Prabhupada describes often as a prison, um, but also sometimes he says um, specifically, you know, like a correctional facility. This is this place um, is a place of correction uh, for the sometimes he says for the rebellious uh, conditioned souls. So it's not it's not that Krishna simply wants us to just um, you know just rot here, just suffer here. Um, he wants us, obviously, we know to go back to him. So he wants us to uh, be corrected, to be purified, um, to reawaken our relationship with him. Um, so from but from our side here, yeah, we should have that repentance and penance. So what kind of penance um, should we be doing? So there's so many austerities and penances um, and different sacrifices mentioned in the Vedic scriptures. Uh, we mentioned about this a little bit recently uh, when we had uh, Nisimha Chaturdashi. We mentioned, um, well, we know that you know, Hiranyakashipu performed great austerities and penances. Um, but of, of course, that was to achieve something material. Uh, but he was, you know, he was doing the, these uh, penances that has been given in the Vedic scriptures. But we understand from Srila Prabhupada, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is our penance? We don't have to do all these complicated penances mentioned in the scriptures. We just have to do Harinam Sankirtan. We just have to chant the name of the Lord. Um, that's our sacrifice, the Sankirtan Yagya, Sankirtan sacrifice. So in one sense, if you look at it objectively, it's not much of a sacrifice. In one sense, we just, it's, it's not very costly. It's not very, um, we don't need great opulence. We don't need to be in a certain position. What Sri Prabhupada says so many times, whatever position you are, whoever you are, wherever you are, Whatever your situation is, you know, everyone can chant. Um, it doesn't require anything else. Um, so in that sense, you could say, oh, it's not, it's not, it's not really an austerity at all compared to the other austerities and penances that we hear about. But obviously, um, we can say we are sacrificing our time and energy instead of so many material things that we are. You know, for conditioned soul to, in, instead of um, giving your time and energy to a material thing, to give it to Krishna, to a spiritual thing, that is a sacrifice. You know, for a pure devotee, it's, it's, it comes natural to them and, and they love to serve Krishna. But for conditioned soul, we can say it is, it is a sacrifice. So many lifetimes, um, we've given our time and energy to material things. To, so then to after such a long time to turn that completely around and give it to Krishna, that is, you can say that is a sacrifice. Um, okay, so, so we have on one hand the will of the Lord, and then on the other hand, it's you could say our endeavor. Then it says the very same energy then acts to help the purified living being make progress on the path of self realization. So I highlighted that because. On the one hand, previously we had we are um, kept in illusion by the external energy, so we are not making we're not making any progress uh, towards self-realization. But then, on the other hand, um, when we actually turn to Krishna, then it actually helps us to to come even closer to Krishna and make progress on the path of self-realization. And oh yeah, it says here to help the purified living being. So how is it that um, you know, the certain 
living beings who want to be want to enjoy separately so it so they are under illusion then how is it that then other living beings then sort of turn things around and they have this this mood of repentance and penance and they actually want to uh, make progress in spiritual life so some first of all some purification needs to happen for them to come to that point and come to that understanding um, of the understanding of, of spiritual life they need some purification needs to be there um, so often probably for for most of us on this call as well um, you'll probably um, agree that for most of us that purification and that sort of change uh, in our life happens through the association of devotees. You know, we bump into a devotee, we come across a devotee um, who, you know, gives us a book, gives us some knowledge, or, you know, invites us to a sangha, or, um, or maybe we hear them do some kirtan or bhajan or something, whatever it might be. For most of us, the causeless mercy of Krishna's devotees is what um, is the initial thing that starts to purify us, starts to change our mind, change our consciousness. And where we never even used to think about these um, spiritual matters at all, um, now we're starting to think about these things, starting to think about what is the actual meaning of life? Where am I going in my life? But yes, yeah, so for most of us, it is due to the causeless mercy of Krishna's devotees, Causeless mercy because, you know, the devotees, um, it may not be anything on our part, but just because the devotees themselves are going out um, and they're going out of their way to actually give Krishna consciousness to others because they have benefited from it so much. So they, they want to give it to others. <clears throat> so in that sense, it can be causeless that it's not that we have done anything. Um, Obviously, also, there may be some um, purification and progress made in previous lives as well. Um, but also, it may be just, um, just this, this completely causeless. For example, um, I don't know if I mentioned this previously in the class, but um, there was one pastime where the devotees asked, you know, they asked Srila Prabhupada that, how is it that you know, we are so fortunate to um, come across, to meet you. You know, how, how is it that we met you, uh, Srila Prabhupada? You know, we were completely involved, uh, completely absorbed in material life, completely chasing after sense gratification, no interest in uh, spiritual life at all. And somehow, by our good fortune, we, we met you, we came across you, and now we're starting practicing devotional life where we become devotees. So what is the cause of our good fortune? Um, and then Sri Prabhupada basically said that, that I am the cause of your good fortune. It's simply because of Sri Prabhupada going out of his way, um, very much going out of his way, going all the way across the ocean. You know? um, so it's because of Sri Prabhupada's cause, this mercy, that these... these um, Heavily conditioned souls have very quickly changed, uh, turned their lives around and become uh, wonderful devotees. And we all know, you know such incredible things Sri Prabhupada's disciples have done um, due to their desire to serve Sri Prabhupada and the empowerment of Sri Prabhupada, of the spiritual master, that not only did they um, turn from, from heavily conditioned souls to, to advanced devotees, but they also, they, they were involved in preaching. They pushed on the movement even further um, after Sri Prabhupada left. Um, you know, they're, they're continuing to push on uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So, yeah, so this point about purification often our journey, if you like, of, of purification and um, our whole change in perspective happens due to the causeless mercy of the devotee. 
Okay, so the last part of the purple, could we maybe have one more volunteer to read this, please? Can I recite Prabhuji? Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. Purple three by three. The example of electrical energy is very appropriate in this connection. The expert electrician can utilize the electrical energy for both heating and cooling by adjustment only. Similarly, the external energy, which now bewilders the living being into continuation of birth and death, is turned into internal potency by the will of the Lord to lead the living being to eternal life. When a living being is thus graced by the Lord, he is placed in his proper constitutional position to enjoy eternal spiritual life. Hare Krishna. Right. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so Prabhupada gives um, this example that he gives often of external, oh, sorry, electrical energy whereby you know, the same electricity can be used for so many different things. You know, if it's used, it can be used you know, to heat, to heat up a room, or you know, it could be used in a fridge, freezer to cool things. Um, it could be used, you know, as we all know, it can be used in so many countless different ways, but the electricity itself is the same thing. So then he compares it to uh, the Lord's energy, the Lord's potency. As you mentioned before, it's the same thing, but used for different purposes. So it's just kind of reinforcing the point in the previous slide um, that on the one hand, it can bewilder the living being into continuation of birth and death. And on the other hand, it can lead the living being to eternal life. <clears throat> so it can lead us into two um, opposite ways. As you mentioned before, depending on our desire, um, those who want to be in illusion, in illusion. Um, so yeah, if we are simply being bewildered, then we'll simply just remain in the material world endlessly in this cycle. But again, as I mentioned, um, due to the, the Lord's mercy and the mercy of the devotees, we can, uh, this, this cycle can be broken and then by the will of the Lord um, you will lead us to eternal life uh, but the, the, I wanted to focus on the last um, sentence because it's it's going back it's relating back to the the verse itself the translation itself because it says when a living being is thus graced by the Lord he is placed in his proper constitutional position to enjoy eternal spiritual life if we just go back, um, so yeah, so in the translation it says that you know the living entity becomes situated in his own glory. So what does that what does that mean um, when we are situated in our own glory? What is our glory? Because we we we're hearing you know Krishna consciousness. We never hear about. You know our glory. Do we? We hear about Krishna's glory. Um, so what is what is our glory? What is the glory of of the living entity? What does that actually mean? So, um, like here in, in the Sanskrit says, "Mahimni swear." Um, it's the glories of the self. So what is what is our glory? So we know um, that we are eternal, full of full of knowledge and full of bliss. So these are the glories of the self. These are our glories, if you like. And then ultimately, um, just as uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jivera Swarupa Hoy, Krishna Nityadas, he says that the constitutional position of every living entity is to be eternal servant of Krishna. So ultimately, our glory is to be an eternal servant of Krishna. So I was I was thinking about this point, and then so then that implies that if that is our glory, that implies to be a servant of Krishna. To be a servant is glorious, and this is a, a very this is a firmly spiritual perspective 
you know, no one who is in material consciousness will ever say that being a servant is glorious. I mean, you could you could give the example um, in the material world um, of you know we're still we're still serving others in our lives even in the material lives, so we can kind of get an understanding that you know um, those who are selflessly serving others um, they become you know glorified by others. So we can kind of understand it a little bit uh, to some extent in the material world. Um, but, you know, at least those who are very much um, in material consciousness and they're very much focused on um, selfish desires, they wouldn't, you would, you know, you never hear them say that, um, you know, I want to become a servant, you know, to be a servant is glorious. They will never have that desire. But in the spiritual world, um, as we heard so many times, it is the more you are the servant of the servant or the servant of the servant of the servant, then the more glorious you become is considered a more elevated position. Um, the lower you become, if you like. So this is, you know, a very profound point, which is completely opposite to everything um, that, you know, people kind of think in the material world, um, that the higher, the higher you get, then the more glorious you are. Um, but yeah, so, <clears throat> so that's what uh, this point is about our own glory. So now if we go back. And then once we are in our uh, constitutional position or in our glory, then we can actually enjoy, we can enjoy eternal spiritual life. So where before um, it said, you know, when we wanted to, we wanted to enjoy, we wanted to enjoy the material world. It's not actually possible, sorry, not actually possible, but this is the actual way uh, to enjoy and to enjoy eternally. So, so that's that's all I had this time. I didn't have so many points, um, you know, beyond beyond the purple itself. Um, so we got we got um, about five minutes uh, until we. So as I said, we do have a budget as well. Um, but before that, yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments or corrections or anything you'd like to add, then yeah, please do. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, don't know pronounce or wish but thank you for a wonderful class. Um, it's a very difficult subject to try and explain the Lord's energies, I know, because uh, within the three energies, then there is a lot of subdivisions as well. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of clarifications. Uh, the the internal energy, which is known as Antaranga Shakti, um, is all spiritual. Um, the Tatashta Shakti, which is the marginal potency, the jiva shakti is actually, I think you mentioned their material. The, the jiva shaktis are in between the um, the margin, in between the internal and the external, yeah. um, but they are actually still spiritual. Mm. So jiva, I think you mentioned that they are material, but I think they're actually still spiritual. Although they fall between the two, uh, the jiva shaktis are actually spiritual. They're just been influenced by material nature, the maya shakti. Bahiranga Shakti, which is the the external potency. So just a clarification that the, the Jiva Shaktis, i.e. The, the marginal potency, which is us, is are actually still spiritual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu, uh, for clarifying that. Uh, anything else from anybody? Okay, okay, no problem. So um, I believe. Uh, is it Mamta Mataji is doing the budget? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, my Dandavat pronouns. This is Mamta here. I think uh, Santosh Mataji will do the translation first and then I'll follow okay. the budget if that's okay, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, can I share the yes. uh, budget now, please? Yeah, sure.
Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is a beautiful bhajan called Emona Durmati. First of all, may I offer my humble obeisances to you all. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation. O oh Lord, such a wicked mind has brought me into this world but one of your pure and elevated devotees has come to bring me out of it. He saw me so fallen and wretched, took pity and came to me saying, O oh, humble soul, please listen to this good tiding for it will gladden your heart. Sri Krishna Chaitanya has appeared in the land of Navadvipa to deliver you. He has safely conducted many miserable souls such as you across the sea of worldly existence. To fulfill the promise of the Vedas, the son of a Brahmana, bearing the name Mahaprabhu of golden complexion, has descended with his brother, the Avaduta Nityananda. Together, they have overwhelmed all of Nadia with divine ecstasy. Sri Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, the son of Nanda, has saved the world by freely distributing his own holy name. Go also and receive your deliverance. O oh Lord, hearing those words, Bhakti Vinoda has come weeping to the soles of your lotus feet and tells the story of his life. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, Mataji, please go ahead, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hey Prabhu, Gaura. Gauranga Prabhu E mano durmati samsaro bhitare padiyachi nu ami E mano durmati samsaro bhitare padiya chinu ami tabani jajan kono mahajane tabani jajan kono mahajane pathaiya dile tumi Pathaiya dile tumi E mano durmati samsaro bhitare Padiya chinu ami Daya kari mare patita dekhiya Doya kori mare pati to dekhiya kohi lo amare giya. Doya kori mare pati to dekhiya kohi lo amare giya. Oh din o jan suno bhalo kotha. Ulasi to hobe hiya. Oh, he di no jan shuno bhalo kotha. Ulasi to hobe hiya. E mano durmati samsaro bitore. Podia chino tu ami. So mare tari te Sri Krishna Chaitanya Navadri Pilopata 
हरे तारी ते श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य नवद्वीपे अवतार तम हे न कत दिन ही न जाने तम हे न कत दिन ही न जाने करे न भाव पार न भाव पार ए मने दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया वेदर प्रतिज्ञा राखी बार तारे रूपम बर्ण विप्रसूत वेदर प्रतिज्ञा राखी बार तारे रूपम बर्ण विप्रसूत महाप्रभु नामे नदिया माताया महाप्रभु नामे नदिया माताया संघे भाई अब दूत संगे भाई अब दूत ए मने दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया छुआमी नंद सुत जिनी चैतन्य नंद सुत जिनी चैतन्य गोसाई निज नाम करंदसुत जिनी चैतन्य गोसाई निज नाम कर तारी लगत तुम बोलिया तारी लगत तुम बोलिया लोहनी जो परित्रा लोहनी जो परित्रा ए मन दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया छुआमी से कथा सुनिया आसी नाथ तुम चरण तले से कथा सुनिया आसी नाथ तुम चरण तले भक्ति बिनाद कांदिया कांदिया भक्ति बिनाद कांदिया कांदिया अपना कहनी बोले बिनोद सेवक बोले ए मन दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया आमी ए मन दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया आमी तब निज जन कन महाजने तब निज जन कन महाजने पाठे दिले तुमी ए मन दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया आमी ए मन दुर्मती संसार भरे पड़िया आमी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय श्री कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच फॉर लिसनिंग एवरीवन हरे कृष्ण
Hi, Hare Krishna, Mataji. That was so beautiful. Um, we could probably hear many more bhajans from you. Um, uh, but yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Listening. Thank you so much, Rabbi. This is actually one of my favorite bhajans. So I was very happy that you've seen this. Um, oh. And also, uh, just a recommendation if, if anyone hasn't heard uh, Agni Dev Prabhu's album, uh, where he sings this bhajan very beautifully. Um, so if you have a look for Agni Dev Prabhu's uh, album, Prayer to the Lotus Feet of Lord Krishna, yeah. this is the yeah, this is the first track on that. Yeah. So he, he sings, yeah. it, sings it so wonderfully. So you can find that on YouTube anyway. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And also thank to you. Santosh, to Santosh Mataji for the translation. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, so... And that brings us to the end of another session. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming. And of course, we will be continuing tomorrow with chapter three as well. Vancha kalpa turubhyascha kripa sindhu bhyavacha patita nam pavnevyo vaishnavebhyo namo nantakoti vaishnavrindaki jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Wonderful class Thank you, everybody. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.